Okay, so we're going to solve a pretty basic related rates question. We have a oil tanker that has sprung a leak and it's leaking oil in a circular fashion. So basically I have a picture of a circle. I like to draw pictures when I do related rates questions. Uh, it helps kind of visualize everything. I'm going to go ahead and draw the radius of this circle and I'm going to label it R. And it might be tempting to label it 60 feet, and some people might even label it 60 feet. I tend not to do that. In a related rates picture, if, if a quantity is changing, I'm going to label it with a variable. So in other words, oil is leaking out of this tanker, so the radius is actually increasing. So 60 just represents a snapshot in time, and R is changing. So because R is changing, I'm going to label it R. Probably, honestly, should label it R of T, because if you think about it, R is a function of time. So in other words, as time goes on, the radius is going to change. So even though I'm labeling it R, uh, it's implied that it's R of T. So what do we do with related rates questions? Once we have our picture and we have it labeled and ready to go, I like to write down what rates do I know and what rates do I want to find. So if I kind of take a look here, uh, what rates do I know? As I read the problem, I'll my eyes go immediately right to here, two feet per second, unit per time, that is a rate. And if I wasn't aware of that, it says it right in front of it that, hey, this is a rate. Turns out the radius is increasing at a constant rate of two feet per second. So that's going to be represented by dr dt. And it's two feet per second. Now what rate am I trying to find? Well, the last sentence says, how fast is the area of the spill increasing. So that's going to be DADT. And it's actually more than just DADT because if you continue reading the sentence it says specifically when the radius of the spill is 60 feet. So I write, need to write DADT when R is equal to 60. So now I know what I'm looking for. I know what I want to find. I have to come up with an equation that relates these variables. Well we're talking about circle, area, and radius and so Lucky for us, we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. So area equals pi r squared. Once I have this equation, what I want to do is I want to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time. And I'm going to treat area and r radius as functions of time, which again should make sense because as time goes on, their quantities are going to change. So now why do I have to really say that? Well, I have to say that because when you take the derivative of a with respect to time, where a is a function of time, you need to use the chain rule. Now, this video is not about the chain rule, so I'm not going to get really into it other than tell you the answer, which is the derivative of a with respect to t would be 1 times dA dt. And that's coming from the chain rule. Same thing over here. The derivative of pi r squared with respect to t, where r is a function of t, would be 2 pi r to the 1 but then times the RDT. And that's coming from the chain rule. So I basically have my related rates equation now. It's an equation because there's an equal sign in it and there are rates in it and they're being related. So it's a related rates equation, no big deal there. Once you have that, you want to throw in what you know and solve for what you don't know. So what is it that I know? Well, I know the particular instant that I'm looking at or the snapshot, the radius is 60. So I'm going to plug in 60 for R. Now dr dt is 2 feet per second, so I plug in 2 for that. And I'm trying to find the dt when r equals 60. So this is actually pretty solid because it's basically already solved for. So I have to do a little multiplication. So 2 times 60 is 120, times 2 is 240. I'm going to get 240 pi, which is roughly around 750. Now what does this represent? Well, it's the dt. So to help us get an understanding of what it represents, let's figure out the unit. Now, some teachers do it a certain way. They'll actually have you plug the units in as you go. So plug the units in for R, plug them in for dr dt, and kind of have the dimensional analysis work itself out in the math. And that's great. I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, let's look at the derivative we're looking at here. Let's look at dA dt. Okay. What could that possibly represent? Well, dA right dt what does the a represent it represents area area would be measured in square feet so i know the, the uh, numerator of my unit here has got to be square feet so it's going to be square feet per now per what well it's da dt and t is time 
and time is measured in this problem in seconds so it's going to be square feet per second so that's my unit it's pretty simple to get if you just kind of look at the derivative notation itself so what exactly did we find well you have to think of this oil spill right if, pretend like you're in a helicopter and you're hovering over this thing and you're watching this circle grow at the instant the radius is 60 feet go ahead and take a picture of that so now you have this picture this snapshot in time what you found was that in that particular picture at that instant the area was increasing by 240 pi feet per second, right, square feet per second, because it's an area. Now, why do I know it's increasing? Well, because the rate is positive. So when the derivative or the rate is positive, the function of the quantity should be increasing. And that's your basic standard related rates question. Uh, it's like related rates 101. And I kind of want to just kind of go over real, real quick here the process and, and what we solved here because it can be applied to even complex related rates questions so we started with the picture and with the picture I like to and this is a personal preference label anything that is changing with a variable so even though it mentioned R was 60 I knew that was a snapshot I labeled it R and I understand that R is a function of time if there was some quantity in the picture that remained constant throughout the problem then I would not have a problem labeling it with an actual constant value. Once we have the picture, we want to do our know and find. So what rate or rates do we know? What rate or rates do we want to find? So we kind of get the setup. Once we have that, we got to come up with the equation. The equation is going to be the formula that kind of brings everything together. What, you know, what's, what are we talking about? We're talking about area, we're talking about circle. Well, then I'm going to write area of a circle. Area equals pi r squared. Okay. Your next step once you have that equation is to take the derivative of both sides with respect to time, treating your variables as functions of time so that you can use the chain rule when you take the derivative of it. And then at this point when you get right here, it's basically, well, just plug in what you know and solve for what you don't know. And then I might even say that a last final step would be make sure that you interpret the unit correctly. And if you kind of follow that algorithm, uh, you can attack a lot of complicated related rates questions.